we are, we know that we are a Pentecost people. We know that as a Pentecost people, we celebrate every day the fact that we have been given a gift that was promised and that arrived in an upper room in Jerusalem. I'm not gonna preach your sermon, Stephen, but it arrived in an upper room in Jerusalem as they gathered together. And one of the things that people forget is it wasn't just the apostles in the upper room. There were women- Girl, you better go ahead and preach. There were women there too. And I can remember teaching a Bible study. We got to that part and the argument was that the Holy Spirit only fell on the men. And I had to take them back to chapter one and let them know who was in the upper room. And that when it said it fell on everybody, it fell on everybody, including the women. And so today is our day to celebrate the fact that the promise that was made from the beginning arrived on Pentecost Sunday. And we celebrate it because it is what makes us, that group of people that are set apart and that are dedicated to the word and the works of Christ. And now I'm gonna be quiet as we open with a prayer. And we're gonna pray for the spirit. And it's something we used to sing, Billy, back when we were singing. And that is Holy Spirit rain down. Comforter and friend, how we need your touch again. And I'm not singing, Holy Spirit rain down. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. No eyes have seen, nor ear has heard, no mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide, cover your church, over your church and over our lives. Holy Spirit, rain down. Gracious God, we come before you today asking you to rain down on us that spirit that you sent at Pentecost. Rain down on us that spirit of freedom, that spirit of, of involvement, that spirit of redemption, that spirit of evangelism, just like you did on that day. Rain it down on us today. And as it's raining down, let us know, Father, that you are God and that you have brought us through another week. You brought us through no matter what we've done, no matter what we've said, no matter what we've thought, you've brought us through another week. And in bringing us into this place at this time, Father, we want you to be with us. Rain down a little bit of your spirit. Give us that will to become the people that you want us to be. And as we come before you, Father, we know we've not all done what we should have done. And we know that you can forgive us. So forgive us for all of those things that we may have thought, those things that we have done, those things that we should have done that we didn't do. Forgive us at this time and welcome us into the, that presence that will give us the ability to move up, move out, and move on. And as we're doing all of those things, God, be with us daily. Teach us. Heal us. If we need healing, heal. Heal. Send us the spirit of co cooperation. Send us all of those things that we need in order to become that beloved community that you want us to be in this day and in this time. And as we enter into this service, open our hearts, open our minds, open our thoughts. Be with us and rain down upon us a little bit of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And at this time, we're going to have a call to worship. Holy Spirit, rain down on this place. Let our souls drink your goodness. Let our hearts overflow. Holy Spirit, 
rain down on this place. We're gonna move on to uh, the opening prayer. Uh, please join me. May we feel your presence this day, Holy Spirit, like the people gathered on that day of Pentecost. May you rush into our hearts and inebriate our souls. May we be empowered by your spirit to live a life more faithful to God. Amen. Our call to worship today. I will lead and Joanne will represent the people. When the world divides us, Come, Holy Spirit, make us one. When the world calls us orphaned. Come, Holy Spirit, make us family. When the world leads us astray. Come, Holy Spirit, call us home. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. And our song of invocation is Spirit of the Living God. By Chicago Mass. Let's do the next song. Spirit of the Living God.
Spirit of the living God, fall on me. As we prepare to read the scriptures for today, let us realize that we need his spirit, not just today, but every day. Our scripture lessons from today come from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. And then from the New Testament, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me. And he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around there. All around them, there were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and you will cause flesh and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath 
prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied it, he commanded me. And the breath came to them and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygeria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Liberia belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jewish and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, Standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joah. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show potence in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned in darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Our sermon song is Blessed Quiet.
Amen, amen, amen. I've got to tell you, uh, Brother Russell and Brother Martin and Brother Randy, I picked that song just for y'all. Yes, indeed. That was that's gonna be that's gonna be uh, uh, Solomon Men's chorus one day. Yep, yep. And I, and I saw y'all up there. I saw Martin. Did, didn't y'all see somebody look like Martin and, so, and somebody look like Brother Russell? Yep. I even saw somebody look like Will. Remember Will? He'll be back. You know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That was uh, that. That was. I got another one for you. Stay to the end of the service, and I, I got I got another one just for y'all. Remember Mother's Day? I said we got to get our own stuff. We got to get our own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> bow your heads with me please bow your heads with me <clears throat> thank you lord for uh, giving us this brand new day this day of pentecost where your holy spirit came down upon the believers of jesus and here two thousand years later that holy spirit is still establishing and organizing and blessing your church. We thank you for this opportunity to praise your name this morning. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, which never leaves us or forsakes us just like you, God, because it is your spirit. And so we thank you for being able to be here. We thank you for uh, Solomon. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our members. But mostly right now, we thank you for your word your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, we ask, Lord, that your word would be a blessing to us in every possible way. And so, as I always ask, at this time, may the words of my mouth and may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You, O oh Lord, who are our rock, our strength, our resurrection, and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Well, I want to um, thank my pastor for uh, once again, trusting me with her pulpit. And I wanna thank you members of Solomon for receiving me as the preacher of the day on this, um, on this uh, uh, Holy Ghost <laughs> Sunday. I got, my, I got my Holy Ghost sweat cloth. So, you know, when sweat starts falling off, the Holy Ghost got it, okay? All right, all right. We are in Acts chapter two. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 will be our um, sermon text for today. I'm reading from the uh, New Revised Standard Version, and those two verses read like this. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of the Holy Word this morning. That, filled, that violent wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. Uh, with, that, with those two verses as our text this morning and the day of Pentecost as our text in general, please be prayerful with me on our topic for the next few minutes when the spirit fills the house, when the spirit fills the house. This story that we have in Acts 2 of the beginning of the active mission of the Christian church in the world is one of the most powerful stories in all of scripture because it shows us even on this day, what can happen when the power of the spirit of the living God decides to fill up a space. Now I use the phrase power of the spirit in an intentional way this morning, because I want to highlight the difference between the presence of the spirit and the manifestation of the power of the spirit. Now, if we wanna talk on the one hand about the presence of the spirit, then there is nothing else to say except that the spirit of the living God is everywhere. The spirit of the living God inhabits everything. And that without the spirit of the living God, there can be nothing, no thing. There can be no existence of anything, seen or unseen, animate or inanimate, solid or liquid, plant or animal on this earth or anywhere else. Because everything that exists 
contains God's spirit, which means that the presence of the spirit of the living God is everywhere and is always. Can I get an amen? If, on the other hand, we want to talk about the power of the spirit of the living God, then we are talking about something that gets dispensed according to the plan, purpose, and promise of God. Because, beloved, God not only has all power in God's hands, but God also has all wisdom in God's hands to use all that incredible power according to the purpose God set out for it from the very beginning. And what kind of power are we talking about? I'm so glad you asked me that this morning because we are talking about the kind of power that can make a highway in the middle of the sea like Moses and the Hebrews found out when their backs were against the wall. What kind of power are we talking about? We're talking about the kind of power that can make a little shepherd boy defeat a giant like David and Goliath found out when Goliath hit the ground with a rock upside his head. Ah, we're talking about the kind of power that can renew strength that has been taken away like Samson found out as God renewed his strength in the end one more time. Check out that story. What kind of power are we talking about? The kind of power that can change minds as Esther found out when she decided, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. Ooh, that's one of my favorite stories. What kind of power are we talking about? We're talking about the kind of power that can heal what ails you. Like the man born blind found out. Like the lame man at the beautiful gate found out. Like the 10 lepers found out like the woman with the flow of blood for 12 years who touched the hem of his garment found out. What kind of power are we talking about? We are talking about the kind of power that can give new life to dead things. Like the women who went to the tomb early that Sunday morning discovered when they found the empty tomb. Ha. Huh. Paul said in his letter to the Ephesian church that this incredible power that belongs to God is also available to us according to the working of God's will. It is a power that can definitely fill up the house in more ways than one, especially new houses, Catherine. New houses, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, fill it up. Okay, we can look at it this way. The laws of physics, I, I was paying attention this day. The laws of physics say, that a gaseous substance like the air or the wind will expand to fill the entire space that it is given. It doesn't just stay over in one corner or lie in a puddle on the floor. It does what it can to occupy the whole space. Well, I wanna to suggest to you this morning that the spirit of God is like that. It expands to fill the whole space. Like on the day of Pentecost, 2000 years ago that, that we're reading in Acts chapter two, the, uh, uh, when the spirit of God knocked down the door, rushed right in and filled the whole house. Mm -hmm. Beloved, as one of God's many messengers all around the world on this Pentecost Sunday, I have been sent here to tell you today that God's spirit wants to fill up our whole space in our own experience, in our own lives, in the various houses that we inhabit. God wants to fill up our whole space. The spirit wants to fill the houses that we occupy. For example, take our physical bodies. Jesus referred to his body as a temple, a house dedicated to God when he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Now Paul spoke of our human bodies as temples of the living God and of God's spirit. Both his first and second letters to the Corinthians speak of our bodies individually and collectively as temples of God places dedicated to God, spiritual houses where the spirit of God dwells. 
And in these spiritual houses of flesh and blood, these places we call our bodies, God wants to expand God's spirit. In these physical bodies that, that we call the temple of the Lord, God wants to ignite a spark that can begin to burn a warm flame within us, to set us on fire from the inside out, burning with the passion of our gifts and how to use them for the sake of the world. In these houses of flesh and blood, God wants to blow open the doors of our lives with a fresh wind, ignite them with a fresh fire, and fill the whole house with some new life. When Jesus came to begin his public ministry, he announced the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, Luke chapter four. And one of the many things Jesus did with that spirit was to heal. Jesus brought the healing power of God's spirit to bear into the lives of innumerable people whose bodies, minds, and souls needed to be renewed by that expansive healing power. You don't have to believe me. Just ask blind Bartimaeus. You don't believe me? Ask the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter got healed. You don't have to believe me? Just ask the man who used to have the withered hand, but he ain't got it no more. Don't believe me? Ask Peter's mother-in-law, or Tabitha, or Dorcas, or Mary Magdalene, or any of the innumerable scripture, scriptural personalities that experience how the spirit of the living God put them back together again by filling their houses of flesh and blood with God's expansive healing power. Ah, we don't even have to go that far. We got witnesses right here on this Zoom call that could, to God's healing power. Somebody say amen if you have ever experienced the incredible healing power of God's spirit. Unmute yourself and say amen. This is a Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Y'all know you didn't heal yourself. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit did it. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said he was sent to bring this good news of Amen. healing to those who are bound up in body, mind, or soul, to those who need release from the ills and ailments that physical life can bring, to those who need recovery from overbearing burdens and life-threatening addictions, to those who need relief from the oppression of constant pain, whether it is real or imagined, to those who are poor in spirit because they are poor in health. To all of these, Jesus said he was sent to bring this good news of healing. Now, Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians that all the wonderful treasure we receive from God, we receive in clay jars, human bodies, breakable, fragile vessels, so that it can be made abundantly clear that the incredible and extraordinary renewing power needed to heal these bodies comes from God and not from us. Paul says, we are afflicted, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, so that the life of Jesus, God's spirit, may be made visible in us. Woo, that, that, that gives me the chills. I'm telling you, that really does. Woo. Same thing happened this morning. That's a powerful passage. Sisters and brothers, God wants to fill your house, your body with God's own spirit. God wants to turn your pain into praise. God wants to turn your sadness into gladness. God wants to turn your aches into amens. So somebody give me one. <laughs> amen. 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 Mm -hmm. God's spirit wants to do the same thing to our houses constructed of wood and stone. The places that we call our abodes, old or new. Now for some of us, those, those are places of pride and joy on the outside, but places of emotional mess on the inside. And I hope I ain't gonna be driving up your driveway this morning, but how many of us just this morning 
woke up in houses that were full of turmoil. People grunting instead of talking. Every conversation leading to an argument. Children not talking to parents. Parents not talking to each other. Misunderstandings about trivial matters. No cooperation among housemates. Drama at every turn. No love making going on. Everybody in their own room, watching their own TV, playing with their own computer. Nobody knows what anybody else in the house is thinking. Nobody knows what anybody else in the house is doing. I'm telling you this morning, beloved, God wants to fill your whole house with God's spirit, whether I just described your house or not. Just like God blew open the door of the upper room at Pentecost 2,000 years ago, God wants to blow open the door of your house and fill the whole house where you are living. God wants to heal broken relationships in your house. God wants to restore love that has been lost in your house. God wants to open the lines of communication in your house. God wants to take away fears for the future in your house and let you and your whole household know that God is still a rock in a weary land. God is still a shelter in a time of storm. God is still a way when there is simply no other way at all. In your house, in your house. Finally, beloved, the spirit of the living God wants to fill this house, this temple, this church, this faith community, this gathering of God's people called Solomon Community Temple. On this Pentecost Sunday and in this Pentecost season, the spirit wants to light a spark up in here and begin to fan that spark into a flame, a flame that burns with a passion for those who do not yet know the Lord. Some of them live right across the street from us. A flame that begins to bring new people, a flame that begins to bring new life, new passions and ideas for ministry, new gifts of the spirit, a new faith in God, and a new hope in God's power and love. God wants to gather us in one place like God did on the day of Pentecost in Acts and pour out upon us everything that we need to get going and to keep going. Let me tell you what can happen if we just trust God. When we allow the spirit to have its way with us in our bodies so that we can be presented with renewed bodies, minds, and hearts, when we allow the spirit to have its way with us coming from households of peace into this renewed house of the Lord to lift up our unapologetic praises so that the whole community can hear, when we allow the spirit to have that kind of way with us, they gonna think we drunk up in this place at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> now I know for some people that's all right, but they, we, Listen, y'all know what I'm saying, right? If we allow the spirit to have our way with us, it ain't no way they ain't gonna think we drunk up in here. But then, once we have their attention, then we can testify, and then we can share our faith, and then we can preach like Peter preached on that day of power called the day of Pentecost, because it's not in this lesson, but keep on reading in Acts chapter two, because Peter preached that day on the day of Pentecost. Peter preached about the spirit of the living God, both its presence and its power that can change lives, give sure footing in unsure times and remind us all that God has promised to never leave us or forsake us. Peter preached y'all, Peter preached that day about a man named Jesus, son of Mary, son of man and son of God who came in the power of that same spirit, preaching, teaching, and healing in the name of the God whom that spirit is a part of. Ooh, I wish I had heard Peter preach that day because he preached about how wide the arms of Jesus got stretched out on the cross, wide enough to encompass all who had gathered. 
wide enough to encompass all who would come, wide enough to encompass you and me, wide enough to encompass Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Milwaukee, and all the ends of the earth. Oh, Peter preached that day. He preached about this uh, astounding power of almighty God, the one who raised Jesus from death and the one who raises us to new life. And he preached about the God of love, justice, power, and peace who can become very real in your life and mine in very real situations. If only we allow the spirit of the living God to fill our whole house. Bow your heads with me, please. We thank you for this day of spirit, Lord. We know that every day is a day of spirit, but we thank you for this opportunity to acknowledge just what your spirit is and does and wants. <clears throat> we thank you for this gathering, and we ask that you would multiply us in so many ways. We ask, Lord, that you would let us allow your spirit to heal our mind, bodies, and souls, to heal our physical uh, uh, houses of brick and stone, to heal our church, to heal our neighborhood, to heal our city, to heal our world. Lead us, guide us, empower us, and let us never forget that you are right by our side. So we thank you and we praise you and we do it all in the precious and powerful and matchless name of Jesus. Let the people of Jesus say, Amen. Amen. Now say it again. Amen. Now Amen. unmute and say it like you mean it. Amen. 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 Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Your Holy Ghost town. There you go. Holy Ghost wind all over the place, Stephen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that word. We'll be on time. It's an on time word for us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. And we got our part to do, right, Brother Stephen, Pastor Stephen? We got to open the door. We got to let the spirit in. So that's our, our part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I am praising God for the movement that has begun um, long before now, but this movement that is sweeping us um, in and through seasons, and we are in a resurrection season. And so I'm grateful that uh, we've got a little bit of rain and wind and sun that are helping us to grow and develop and bear the most beautiful and excellent of fruits. Um, so we're going to move on into our time of joys and concerns. I do appreciate Brother Stephen um, preaching that word this morning. Um, just uh, want to start off this time of joys and concerns. Just keep us and our family in prayer. Um, we've got great stuff going on. Uh, Brandy uh, Bennett's youngest daughter graduated. She was class big valedictorian. Um, her graduation was yesterday. And um, she actually finished all her classes in December. So this was the, the, the symbolic uh, finish for her. And we are just so happy and proud of her. Um, also a uh, concern on the, as far as our family is concerned, and that is for uh, Bennett's cousin who has come to our church on several different occasions. Her name is Bianca. Uh, she now has six children. I think when she first came, she had three, maybe four, but she's got six children and she's pregnant, eight months pregnant. She was in a car accident. Some of the children were in the car with her. Um, she has a broken foot 
and I'm sure has been greatly traumatized by the event as well as the children. Um, she was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery uh, yesterday and just want to ask the church to please keep her in prayer um, as we go forward. I, I'll give news as I hear it. Um, as far as I know, she's okay and the baby's okay and I will make sure that you all have updates on how things are going there. So if you would say with me together, thanks be to God and Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Um, go on ahead and Thank unmute yourself. Thank you be to yourselves. God and Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Um, go on ahead and unmute yourselves if you've got a joy or concern that you would like to lift up. Good morning, yeah. everybody. Hello, just uh, want to say this. Uh, this is uh, Ruthie Miller. Just want to say, hey, it's just a joy to be up again and uh, worshiping with all of you. And let's just keep uh, praying and keep our heads uh, up high and hopeful that we continue to get closer and closer to vaccine uh, herd immunity. Uh, the numbers are going up, uh, and as they are, have switched things up and going to people wherever they are, we seem to be getting more people vaccinated, including the kids. So that's that, that's a good thing. So things are turning around, it'll be slow and we still have to do our part. So let's just encourage everybody to just keep going forward because we're gonna get there. Yes, ma'am, amen, amen. Well, let's say together, thanks be to God and Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. Hear our prayer. Thank thank and God. Brother Bennett, I saw you had unmuted to share. Did you wanna go on ahead next? Yes, uh, first of all, I wanna say uh, uh, hello to Solomon Community Temple, all the members. It's been a while since I've been on, since I've been working third shift and uh, sleeping during this time. But uh, I actually went to work last night and still got up to get to the service today because God was calling me to hear this word. Uh, I have a joy, yeah, the joy is what my wife just brought to y'all and that's uh, Brandy graduating with honors. She actually graduated, she, she finished in December, but she just graduated just now. She's been waiting with bated breath and she was the valedictorian so i'm just so so proud i'm just a very very proud parent and i just lift her up and i ask y'all that y'all lift her up in prayer as she uh journeys into life as a young adult and goes to college to uh to pursue a dream to be an entrepreneur amen amen, amen. let's say again um thanks be to god and lord thanks hear our god. prayer lord hear Hallelujah. our prayer I see um, a concern that has been lifted in the chat from Anna. Thank you, Anna. She says, another family that needs prayer, a young woman named Jenna in Madison has been having strokes and has a couple of months of surgery ahead to increase the blood flow to her brain. In the process of this, they also found out that she has brain cancer. She is in her early 30s and she's married with two children. And um, she says her, her joy is the rain and congrats to um, Brandy and to Bennett and, and the family on her graduation. All right, so we definitely will be keeping Jenna uh, in our prayers, God, uh, be with her in this very moment. Um, and let's say together, Lord, hear our prayer and thanks to God. God. Amen. Well, I uh, went to the heart doctor yesterday. Well, not yesterday, a couple of days ago. And they gave her a um, cure. Uh, her heart will get back on time. And she don't have to go back for another year. Okay, so you said she went in for surgery on, I didn't hear the very first part, Mr. Russell. She didn't wear a heart monitor. Okay. For evaluation, and they found out that her heart was on time. It was uh, miss, missing a beat, so it's back on time, and she don't have to go back for a year. Amen, amen. Oh, what great news. Well, let's say together, thanks be to God. Wonderful news. 
Amen. Any other joys or concerns to lift up before the body and the Lord today? Uh, Pastor, I would like a uh, prayer for my nephew. Uh, he was in Ohio and his sister brought him back here. And so he was down there homeless and, mm -hmm. and he's very sick. So she had to put him in the uh, middle, uh, what kind nursing home, nursing home nursing. For, for him. So and I'm asking for prayer for him. Uh, he's a young guy, but I just hate to see this happen to him. Yes. Thank you, yes. All right. Well, let us say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes. Glad that he's, um, glad that he was, um, connecting with family and that she was there to help him to get into a, a place that can care for him as he needs to be cared for. Yes, that was very nice. Amen. Amen. Any other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Uh, sure, Fee. Uh, Randy here. Um, uh, joy that I have is uh, the existing work that we have, I guess, is feast or famine, and uh, things are going extremely well. Uh, concern, uh, we are trying to uh, work with the city of Wauwatosa, which wants to have a diversity and inclusion plan, which is a great thing, but uh, we're waiting, we're, we're in those waiting periods to figure out what's gonna happen. And uh, secondarily, tomorrow and Tuesday, I have jury duty for the first time in probably 40 years. So I'm excited about that though. It's important. Oh, cool, okay. Well, thanks be to God. Uh, and Lord, hear our prayers as things continue to progress. And uh, we continue that you can experience feasts going forward. Amen. <laughs> All right. Any other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? I'll go. <laughs> okay. So many of you know already that we have an offer accepted. So please pray for the other hoops that we have to go through in order to get a house in Milwaukee. And I'm really hopeful that it will happen. Um, I'd like to ask prayers for Judy and Lewis Clark. Lewis's um, mom died and they've been going through her stuff and it's led to a lot of family contention and there needs to be peace in fam and Lewis's family right now. Also, um, this week, a joy is that we um, did a resource fair with MLK, Pastor and I did, and we are now establishing a stronger connections with the elementary school. But also there's a young mother over there that is a newborn that is going to need housing and help. And we'll be finding out more about that at the beginning of this week. Mm -hmm. um, we passed the first hurdle. Another joy is we passed the first hurdle on healing spaces. It looks like we're going to be getting some paths established to help make the food pantry more um, convenient to people and also be more beautiful. And other things are in the works. And so just please keep all the projects lifted and um, for more abundance to flow in because we're still trying to raise money for the splash program and other things. And I gotta just say that I am just really excited about us reopening in July and willing to help in whatever way necessary. And um, this Wednesday, I'm going to um, be sending some people, if you wanna be on the list, let me know, um, a work party notice because for the gardens. We have five new garden beds that need to be planted. And also it'd be nice to get some flowers around the church before um, July. And, you know, so just, and then I know that we're planning some work parties for the inside of, for cleaning in the inside of the church. So I just hope everybody participates and reaches out to other people to help too, because it's gonna be a lot of work, but it's really important because as Stephen was talking about the Holy Spirit pouring out, we gotta give the Holy Spirit something to work with, amen. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, so let's till the ground to make it right. Amen. Amen. Um, so many joys. And uh, we say together, thanks be to God for each and every joy. And also for those um, mentioned that were, uh, that are having health issues and um, for the, for the uh, oversight and guidance of our future endeavors. Let us say together, thanks, uh, Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Amen. Other joys or concerns to share?
Okay, well, I just want to say again, thank you. Um, thank you, Stephen, um, our pastor, our brother, um, fellow servant and disciple in the struggle for that beautiful sermon um, on time. So I mean, it touched my heart, um, filled me with the Holy Spirit and has encouraged me to open up the doors and let the spirit come in again and again. And I can't thank you enough for that on time word. Um, and also thanks to each person that had something to do with this service coming together today. It, it might all look easy and like we didn't do much, but actually, you know, we take our time and we think about what's gonna happen on today and um, we work towards it and make sure that it's presented to you and to the community in a way that we hope will uh, bless you. And so um, I hope you all have been blessed on this day. And I thank you all who have sown into um, the construction of the service. Thank you all who have shown up to worship. Um, we are the church. Um, just blessed by you all. So let us say a word of prayer um, so that we can uh, continue on in this spirit-filled service today. Amen. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. We come together, oh God, as your body, um, lifting up the name of Jesus, lifting up the stories of Jesus, lifting up the gospel, oh God, in which we are made to know um, that you love us, oh God, and that um, in you we do have new life. Lord God, we thank you for that precious spirit, oh God, the comforter, um, our friend, our companion, our advocate, oh God our healer and um, our provider, Lord God. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which has brought all of us thus far, oh God. And um, not by mistake, oh Lord, we ask um, in this moment, as some of us are um, growing and transitioning and um, beginning to see fruits of our labor, oh God. Some of us, um, as we are longing yet to see um, the fruits that we have been working toward, Lord, all, all of us in one place, we come before you and we thank you, Lord, for the work that has already been done and for the work that your Holy Spirit is doing and that it will continue to do. Oh, Lord, I thank you for pouring out a healing in Jesus' name on all of those who have been lifted up today who are in need of health, um, a, a healing for their health, oh God, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you would um, set your angels round about them, oh God. Let their hands minister unto them, oh Lord. Um, Lord, we pray for miracles, Lord, and that we'll hear testimonies coming from um, our next uh, joys and concerns time, oh God, that we'll, we'll hear some miracle stories, oh God. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit to heal and to re restore and to renew. And we ask, Lord, that you do this not only um, by your Holy Spirit, but do it through the hands of the doctors and nurses and um, um, health regiments that have been set down, oh God, just work in all kinds of ways, in and out of situations, as we know only you can do. Lord God, we thank you for all of the joys that have been lifted up, Lord. Um, we thank you for uh, the legacy of our youth, God, who carry forward our dreams and our visions and our hopes, oh God, and um, help us to be supporters and uh, to be present in ways which are needed so that we can continue to be uh, um, people that can undergird and walk with um, those who are on the journey, oh God, spiritually, um, educationally, Lord, all the ways that, that our youth and um, folks that are, are um, mentees in our lives are, are going, Lord, we thank you um, for walking with us and for walking with them. 
Lord God, we ask that you would continue to um, keep us and to provide as we know you promised that you will. Lord, you said you will never leave us or forsake us. And so we ask that you continue, Lord, to help us remember that you are with us. Your presence is always with us, oh God. Um, and let us open the doors, each and every one of us, our households um, that are represented here, all those that we love and care for, help us to remember to swing open the doors of our temples and of our living spaces and of our congregation, oh God, so that your Holy Spirit and its power can blow through each and every space we have access to. Um, and we thank you, Lord, that you are just and able and powerful enough to do it. Lord, a special blessing on our speaker today, all that he's poured out, we pray you pour it back into him. And Lord, all of this we lift up in your holy name and in the name of your beloved and precious son, Jesus Christ, who died for us so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This we thank you for and lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And thank, thank you, each and every one of you for being here today. It is time for our announcements. Uh, our standard announcements, the food pantry. Uh, volunteer from 11.30 to 3.30, and people can shop from one to three. And if there's someone that you know that needs help, you can always refer them to the food pantry. And that would be to Billy, and her number is there. She, she can be contacted um, for help. As we move down, there's the food pantry garden. And as Catherine said, we now have beds. They're going to need to be planted and taken care of. I'm great at planting stuff, but I'm not so great at the rest of it. Not that it grows. Our gathering times are Sunday school at 1030 on Zoom, and then our worship on Zoom as well. And it's always this particular um, Zoom meeting. Um, tides and offerings are always needed. You can drop them in the church mail shop, slot, slot, or you can mail them to uh, the church, or you can donate on the church's website. Uh, we are in the midst of uh, the book study of Push Out, the Criminalization of Black Girls in School. It met twice, and it will meet on the 25th, the 27th from 6.30 to 9 on a Zoom link. Uh, if you're interested, contact Pastor because she is co-leading. Is there anything you need to add to that, Pastor? Um, I just want to add that this study is um, it's critical. And I, I understand, you know, we all have a whole lot on our plates. Um, the study has been mainly full of women. <laughs> it is a United Methodist women's study. Um, but this is a study for the support and the lifting up of black girls and black women. And, and, and um, <clears throat> this issue is largely overlooked, I think, in society. There, that's the reason why we're doing the study. And so I'm just hoping that even if you don't have a chance to join, um, hope that you will. But even if you don't have a chance to join, I hope that you'll get the book and that you'll read it and call me up and, and, you know, let's talk about it or let's have a church conversation about how we can support um, Black girls in schools. How can we support Black girls in our community? Um, and if you're not sure what's the big deal, why are we needing to talk about Black girls? All, all the more reason to get the book and let's have a conversation. The reasons are many and, um, uh, you know, the, the, the trauma and the issues that, that Black girls are facing, the oppression that we are undergoing is great. Um, so this is a big issue. I'm a Black girl. I've got a Black girl. I've got Black granddaughters. Um, and and we are, we're all dealing with this struggle. So please support it in whatever way you can. Thank you. Um, I want you to get your calendar out and I want you to mark 
uh, May 29th, which is next Saturday, 10 o'clock, we are going to start prepping for the reopening. So we need to clean. We need to clean the church. So anyone who is available next Saturday at 10, join us at the church. Um, and we're going to clean. We'll start. I don't know where. We'll, we'll wait for Billy to tell us what we're doing. Um, but put it on your calendar and try to be there. If you can only stay a little while, come and stay as long as you can to help us get the church ready. Special collections um, during uh, groundworks while they were installing the, bed, the uh, raised beds, one of the groundwork staff's car had bro was broken into and her insurance will not cover it. So they're asking for a donation to help repair the window in her car since her insurance will not cover it. Uh, the other thing is, as Catherine said, we received the call for uh, the mother in need from MLK. And we have a lot of parents who are in need. We have some who don't know they're in need because they've always managed to do without. So um, as a church, part of our mission should be to help out whenever we can. Um, those are all the announcements that I have. Is there anyone who has additions? I've got one additional announcement, and that's a reminder of our upcoming BMCR meeting, which is an election meeting, which will be on uh, June 12th at 11 a.m. on Zoom. Um, I will make sure that we've got a Zoom link that can be shared in the bulletin for next week. You can also call me to get the information. Okay. Is that it? All right. Then our closing hymn. Good times, and that's not the TV I show. People sitting a little quiet. <laughs> yeah. People sitting a little quiet, yeah. Act like the Lord hasn't done anything for you. All right. But I don't know about you, but He has blessed me. Mm -hmm. Over and over. Mm. When I wake up in the morning and look over, see my wife doing good. <laughs> I'm feeling fine. We're in our 80s. <laughs> and we're doing good. Amen. But then yeah. still, we can sit down on God. All right. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this.
Good time. Out for you, brother Martin, and and brother Edgar. That's for y'all. <laughs> yeah, they they were having a seriously good time. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> good time, good time. Yes, they were. Good time. Those sisters <laughs> in the back were killing it, man. I'm telling yes, you, they, they were killing it. <laughs> <laughs> and they turned around. I said, Woo! "We got to, we good got time. to do that. I can't wait till we get back." <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a move. That's a move right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Zionists are teaching us how to have a good time. And so as we have had a good time, I, I definitely have, and I hope you have too. We are going to um, receive the benediction today, which um, is listed in the bulletin. You can read along with me. Um, but our benediction today is go out into God's world filled with the spark of the Holy Spirit. Let love guide your actions. Listen for the spirit of truth. Spread the peace of Christ and remind everyone you meet that each one is a beloved child of God. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful time of service. Good times. Good times. Good times. Need some more of those. I like those songs. Yeah, good times. <laughs> yeah, good you job. all have a wonderful day. Thank you. You all yeah. too. Blessings, Thanks, everyone. Hurry up, hurry up and get your greetings in before Joanne cuts you off. <laughs> 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 have a good day, everyone. Day. 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 See you Saturday. Yep. See you soon. <laughs> We know it's not always you, Mrs. Crump. <laughs> she tried to defend herself a little bit last time. I'm, I'm going to wait until everyone is off. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get off. <laughs> Blessings, Mrs. Crump. Blessings all. Bye, everybody. I get it.